on the sidelines of the COP27 in Sharm el-Sheikh and to be having uh, another step after the COP27 to be fighting the uh, global negative impacts of uh, climate change for the future generations. I'm honored to be having with me on uh, Nile TV International and the Egyptian television is uh, Mr. Ralph Raganvano, the Minister of Climate Change for Vanuatu. Thank you very much for being with us today on uh, Nile TV International. There is an initiative led by uh, your country regarding uh, taking the negative impacts of uh, climate change to the International Court of Justice. What is the importance of such a step and how did you come up with such an idea? Thank you. The, uh, the idea came from uh, students in the Pacific, uh, law students, uh, looking at the problem of climate change and how as law students, students of law, they could help to address the issue and they came up with the idea that uh, th this is the biggest problem in the world, climate change. It must be referred to the highest court in the world, which is the International Court of Justice, mm. to give us more clarity on what states should do mm. as m member states to the Paris Agreement. What are ob obligations of states? We know what they say on paper, but it's good for the court to also give its opinion mm. on what those obligations are towards the human rights of the citizens of all the states that have signed this convention. Mm -hmm. We have seen some of the negative impacts regarding Vanuatu in 2013 and afterwards uh, in 2022. How did you come up with solutions to be fighting the negative impacts of uh, climate change for Vanuatu and the same problems that are facing different countries around the world because this is a global summit and we need global solutions uh, for this problem? In Vanuatu we are facing a climate crisis uh, every day, every month is a, is a battle to try and keep our people safe, uh, to get enough money to provide services that the population needs. So for us it's just, we are in a permanent state of crisis. We've, uh, our parliament has declared a climate emergency and we are constantly in a climate emergency. So we come to events like COP seeking greater support from the rest of the world. We are one of the poorest countries in the world. Uh, we, have, we were not responsible for emissions that are causing climate change. We contribute 0.00016% uh, of emissions, mm. and yet we are on the front line of the effects of it. And so we come to COP because we need international cooperation under the framework of the UNFCCC, which says that uh, more developed countries that are more responsible for emissions should help those lower income countries who are suffering the effects. And uh, that's what we're here for, to try and make that system work so that we can give better uh, development outcomes to our people. And finally, did you find uh, those solutions from the richer countries, from the more industrialized nations that are responsible for the negative impacts of climate change towards your country? We are seeing some response, but of course it is not enough. In our view, it is not enough, and we are here to push and push, uh, try to get them to have more higher ambition and uh, in terms of their commitments, particularly in terms of reducing emissions and in, in terms of uh, providing climate finance. Thank you very much, Mr. Ralph uh, Raganvano, the Minister of Climate Change for Vanuatu. Thank you very much once again for being with us. And thank you, Egypt, for hosting us so nicely. And this brings us to the end of uh, this interview. Stay tuned on ILTV International for uh, more updates from the COP27 in Sharm el-Sheikh.